Hello, hello, hello. I'm Kendra. This is the Weekly Watchlist. I love to watch and we are about to react to X-Men 97, Episode 6, Life, Death, Part 2. Let's get into it. <laughs> so this is going to be Life, Death, Part 2, and this is where we get back to Storm and uh, Forge and their very dangerous looking situation with some demon bird thing called the adversary who shall not waste my meal <laughs> which um very scary i have a lot of empathy for storm i love storm she's always been one of my favorite x-men characters so i don't know what's gonna happen um i imagine it's going to be harrowing well i don't know i'm fairly certain that nothing could be as harrowing or emotionally devastating as episode five i just woo i'm still thinking about that i looked up the e is for extinction storyline by grant morrison um and it's wild <laughs> so i guess xavier is a twin according to this story and got into a psychic battle with his twin sister while he was still in the womb wrap our heads around that um she yeeted herself out of the womb I, I i i'm really just trying to figure that out i don't know how she survived yeah that's fucking it's freaking weird and then she gets she finds this facility somewhere in the jungle where they you know used to make sentinel so she uses bolivar trasks like the, the last people in his family to activate the thing and then she sends the sentinels to genosha to basically massacre everybody there um then ends up back at the x mansion and essentially swaps bodies with xavier before emma frost could take revenge for what happened at genosha so that is a really good storyline i don't know how much of that is actually going to play out here and i don't know everything like i said but you know, I'm just so intrigued and compelled by what's going on like right in front of my face because they're clearly taking elements from the comics, remixing them, you know, uh, mixing them together. So yeah, like they're doing their thing and it's, it's awesome. Let's go. Let us react to X-Men 97 episode 6, Life Death, part 2. This is a somber opening. Of course it is, though. Oh, we're not going to see Gambit in these credits. Oh, no. There's no Gambit. Nightcrawler instead. Oh! And Cable. Cool. What the fuck is that? So where are we now? What is this intergalactic battle happening here? Surrender? No, just perish. Pigeon shall not thwart the will of the Okay, so these are creepy. Who is she? I'm like, I don't need to know any backstory. <laughs> Ronin. Okay, that's Ronin. Be honored to fall at my feet, Ronin. For you shall be memorialized as the corpse upon which I pose. A true Kree bows to no one. Well, whoever she is, she's powerful. Thank you, Gladiator. Ronin, dear. Tell me where the Supreme Intelligence has fled. Or your forces shall suffer. A million pardons, your highness? You dare interrupt my glorious- A million pardons! It's your sister, the Empress. Oh, joy. My dearest sister is always of utmost priority. Greetings, Shi'ar. One year ago, we offered the skills of our mighty healers to a Terran man on the verge Terran of man. So some dude from Earth. Xavier! Oh, ordinary Terran, this man helps 
spare the entire universe from the madness of my brother Deken. And now, in his greatest feat yet, What's happening? this man has unlocked the secrets to my What? Mind. So I, Empress Lalandra, stand before this High Council. She about to get married. For you, my loyal people. With joyous news in times of war to be mm. To Xavier. And our empire shall welcome a new... Who's walking empire. now, apparently? Professor Charles Xavier. What you doing, Charles? To the might and glory of the Imperium. Hey, Ross Marquand. <laughs> Pray our act of performative jingoism <laughs> Not jingoism concerns over my heritage. My subjects trust me when I say you are no mere Terran, Charles. Uh yeah, alright. So I know I said I didn't need to know anything, but I definitely don't know anything about him having some romance with a lady. Empress spend a portion of her time ruling the galaxy from my little corner of it. She's not going to tear me. The Emperor has much to learn about masking his manipulations. Families often mimic black holes, visit and risk being stuck in its ever spiraling vacuum of dramas. Invite them to the wedding. Invite them to the wedding. Unless you fear they'll think you've abandoned them. Once we crush the Cree, an educator such as you can teach them our ways, play the role of the peacemaker. Wasn't aware my X Men and I were playing make believe, much like my legs in this armor's exoskeleton. All ruling is make believe. Hmm. Oh! I pretend to be perfect, as my subjects would never love the woman beneath the armor. Not like you do. Never pretend. I like her. Will you at least consider Earth? I will. The virtue of a teacher lies in showing their students how to walk on their own. True. But only if he is sure there are no more lessons he can teach them. Is he trapped? Is she not allowing him to leave? Why bother? He's a liar. Forge made his bed. Let him die in it. So this is like an inner demon. Is this all in her mind? I've seen a couple of theories about that. So she's trapped. You go for help, but there is no pill for my poison. Get used to it. You're not an X Man anymore. Mm. Where did that get you? Kissing the hand that beats you? I do not fear death. I know. You fear living. It is a tempting daydream. Is that why you feel your power sought refuge with this monotone family? Enough! Let me out! Let me out! Look at your family, who you follow. I was wrong. Forge didn't rob your gifts. You had already renounced the Lord of Chaos. Oh, he don't get up! Weaver of lies! I tear your thread and break your loom. Mm. Depart to the desert, demon. Depart. Is it really that easy? So that's it. That's all. Okay. Mom practice does magic. Careful, your shoulder. You need a better bedside face, Doc. Its bite is magical. Perhaps your mother's book holds an answer. She wrote about a cacti, the Midnight Chala, grows in nearby midnight caves. Midnight Chala. Does it need I feel like I've heard of that before. It's aloe, it's powerful magic medicine. Then we ride together, my love. Oh, okay, well. That's, uh, that's settled then. The Empress and her royal consort. These people look familiar to me. Like, I feel like I recognize that helmet and stuff. I just don't know who they are. This is so funny because I was really like, oh, I don't need to know. <laughs> Your Majesty, I have known you since you were but a hatchling and wish you couldn't have this conversation in private. Is a royal the she are okay. And his guard fill my ears with news of coming victory. Yes, but 
We have been trapped in so much change. Some yearn for the stable comfort of what is familiar. For trapped students. in change. What a phrase. Your consort was born on the wrong side of the stars. Gentle sister, heed my throne. Union with the Terran would bind the Shi'ar into alliance with his inferior homeworld. I respect you speaking the quiet part out loud, Deathbird. So let's speak plainly. Xavier would see his Milky Way ghetto become our new throne world. Excuse the fuck out of me! I must invoke the right of Emdasha. Oh, y'all about to battle it out? The right requires... A non-Shi'ar pass a test of loyalty in order to wed a royal. I finished that volume my second day here, Deathbird. Not any mere test, Terran. A challenge of my own choosing. To renounce Earth and erase all memory of your life there. Mm. And you, dear sister, must be the one. To oh, oh, she's a psychic. Damn. All right. Shara and Kithri. Our highest gods. Here I thought the Shi'ar looked down on art as a sign of insanity and deviance. In most cases. But the union of Shara and Kifri is in most cases. core of our principles. What is united if one half must be erased for the sake of the whole? Idealism is also a sign of insanity. <laughs> I have a very old and very dear friend on Earth who would agree with you. His name is Magnus, and I wish to remember him. You've made your decision then. Forgive me. I do so love to think. Do you love me, Charles? Even you know Deathbird's challenge goes too far. On Earth, you fought tirelessly to be tolerated and were nearly killed for it. Why not let go? They won't let us be together. Not unless I forfeit my throne, which is exactly Deathbird's design. Imagine the chaos that my sister would unleash across the galaxy as ruler. Your devotion is beyond measure. Perhaps it is time to show you mine. I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe, may, maybe it is a good idea to go find like another civilization out in the stars somewhere that has evolved beyond the petty squabbles of humans. Cause I know I'm tired. Y'all tired? Cause I'm tired. Them build such a thing into the very foundations of your land. And they said that they were here to help. Oh, I'm so sorry, Aurora, for deceiving you, for drawing the adversary. Hush. The demon was not your doing. A big evil owl that feeds on anger and clothing. <laughs> Call me Chum the Warrior. <laughs> then I am Chum too. They're Before cute. My... Growing up, I always heard how the worst weapon used by the Europeans was not bullets or blankets, but a white lie that they could make us believe. Make us believe. The worst <laughs> weapon was to instill disbelief in ourselves. I don't know how you feel about and make us believe that we are unworthy of our potential. Bars. Lessons. Charles Xavier, do you stand in our circle to complete the right of M. Dasha? I do. And do you renounce all memories of Earth, of your life there? I do. And of your X-Men? Do you renounce your X-Men? See? He can't. He hesitates. He insults all Shi'ar. This was exactly my fear. My God, you are dramatic. <laughs> we entrust our mind to <laughs> endured for eons to a ruler descended of Simeon's. Have our blood mixed with his inferior freak fluids. My sister. Like my brother Deken, has gone mad. Renounce her before her lovesick lunacy destroys us all. Sedition. Gladiator. Arrest this treacherous vulture and any who dare to stand with her. Hey, hey, hey! We got civil war! Oh, shit! Oh, damn! Okay, Gladiator! Fuck him! Kill 
your own sister? Hear me. Class is now in Yo! Yo! Just put him in class, Charles! What have you done? You're gonna listen to the Terran now, bitch. Please Shut up. Your hand if you have a question. <laughs> to answer, I have used my vast <laughs> psychic abilities to draw us into the astral plane. Now pay attention. It is time for today's lesson. <laughs> I just love that he did that so much. <laughs> oh damn. Uh you spelunking? <laughs> and the adversary you is still there. Be the bigger woman. To save him, be above it. No. Forge destroyed you. I guess that would be taste. Ooh, yummy. Fear poached in self loathing. Or the high road storm. Last stop. You can't the adversary resembles anxiety. At least to me, because I live with chronic and very sometimes debilitating anxiety, and that is what it sounds like to me. No, you demon. Get it, Storm. Not a day. Get it. The executioner's neutralizer was not the only weapon tamping down my gifts. There was that lie, and I believed it. Smart. Believe what is she doing? Play dead, or humanity will thunder down upon you and your kind. Go on ahead, Omega Level. Let them thunder. I know that shit is right. I am lightning. Yes. yes! yes! Oh. You know what? We needed this after what happened last episode. Yes! Oh shit! She going to space! Storm! Storm! Oh baby! Oh mama! Oh yes ma'am! Oh, yes ma'am! Go ahead, baby. Ah, ah. <sighs> to feel grateful towards a demon. What are demons but reflections of our fears and shame? True that. Oh, things we bury within us until we finally heal our adversary by embracing it. It's starting to heal. Oh, she looks amazing. So what now? You've been given a second chance. Should we whisk away to some tropical island? Not an entirely unpleasant idea. No, baby, I gotta go home and check on my X-Men because uh, some things are afoot. Yeah, baby, your family. You gotta get back to your family. Let's talk about power. Who can tell me from where the Shi'ar Imperium draws its might? <laughs> from the crushed skulls that house inferior minds such as yours. Wrong. Demerits. <laughs> Demerits. <laughs> the power of your she is dramatic. Is in truth, a harvest of stolen worlds. You strike at the knees and claim you can help them walk again. Which brings us to this conclusion. The Shi'ar Empire is a snake oil racket. <laughs> might is right. The rhyme that sells the lie that for me to be more, you must be less. Your existence against mine because... Because. Just because. Who made up these silly rules? Who made up these silly rules? I make believe that the universe is very old and all of us very young. young. Oh, Xavier. Ooh. Oh, what happened? Heavens, no! <gasps> Who is sending these psychic visions? No. Or is he is he feeling the moment? Drinking wine, making love. Oh, my children, my children of the atom destroyed. 
Yeah, he's feeling, he's feeling it. What happened? Oh, gosh. Charles! What in the stars? I must return to Earth immediately. But we've nearly convinced the Council. It doesn't matter. While I cowered in the cosmos, the unthinkable has happened. Charles, if you leave, you will prove my sister right about you. How? So be it. I will not abandon my kind. It is time I return to my X-Men. Wow. This shit is getting good, man. I gave you my DNA to access Master Mold. Are we getting Cassandra Nova? Kill me, please. For what happened in Genosha? I beg you. Don't take all the blame, Oliver. Is that sinister? Okay. It's sinister. Okay. Ride to Nosha was merely the beginning of a prologue. You have nothing to fear. You place your faith in sinister. <laughs> okay. Oh, I really needed that. Thank God. Great episode. I'm going to rate this an 8.5 out of 10. Let's talk about it. Yo, whoa, what? So, okay. Well, okay. Let's do this in sections. Okay, section one. I really enjoyed the continuation i guess slash sort of wrapping up of the adversary storm and forge thing like i just love that i just i just love that so much i love that to pieces i love that that was all in her mind i love that it was just her inner demons basically telling her hey you got a lot to fear but are you gonna give in to that fear are you gonna hide because you know humans hate mutants and you got struck down and you're afraid that that's all they're ever gonna do or you're gonna embrace your true power and say fuck all that noise i'm motherfucking storm brilliant beautiful the four storm love story cute as hell love it to death <laughs> xavier and the shear I don't know much about the Shi'ar. Those headdress things that they wear look familiar to me. I know about the Kree because of um, Captain Marvel and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, but um, that was just amazing. I didn't know what the hell was going on with Xavier and what was going to happen when we saw him again. I thought he was actually just going to return to Earth full stop, but they showed us where he's been. And I just love that little school lesson, that psychic school lesson that he taught them and he called them dramatic and yeah, I mean, you know, on the one hand, sure, humans are humans, <laughs> but uh, Xavier is right. We are very, very young. We, we are so young when, it, when you think about us versus the universe. I don't know, like the, the nature of being superior to, um, at least according to us humans, seems to be that we're territorial and we cannot coexist um, without having, without feeling the need to fight for dominance over each other, fight for control over each other, fight for supremacy over each other. Yeah, like those themes and lessons are always gonna be the part of all of this that, that gets me. What matters to me are the the lessons, the case that this story is making for or against one human notion or trope. I like to get inside the heads of the characters. I like to get inside the hearts of the characters. I like to see what connects them, what tears them apart. That That's why episode five was so gut-wrenching for me. Gambit was a, a, a beautiful soul. The way that he loved Rogue, it was beautiful. Magneto, a very complex and well-written character. His feelings about humans versus mutants and the, the history and the past, his backstory of, of, of surviving the Holocaust and bowing to himself never again. Like, that shit is powerful. Who he is as a person beneath the Omega level stuff that he can do is what appeals to me more. You know, Storm as a, as a, as a, as a person 
grappling with fearing her own power. That shit is amazing. And then when she finally embraces it, that's the awesome part for me personally. Anyway, I loved this episode. It was amazing. It was the, the right thing, a needed thing after the devastation, the emotional wreckage that episode five left in its wake. Um, to see Storm coming out of it, to see Xavier being like, you know what? I need to go home to my X-Men. I need to go to my children. Y'all can have this shit, she are. I'm sure that they're gonna come back around again. I'm pretty sure they're gonna have to fight again. I'm guessing that Nightcrawler, since he was in the opening credits, he will have a bigger role in some of the other episodes because we lost Gambit. I'm really, really, really hoping that Cable is stuck in a time loop and then he's gonna reverse it, please. <laughs> Um, so no Cassandra Nova replaced by Sinister? Mm, okay, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I like Sinister, I guess, but I was really intrigued by Cassandra Nova, so, you know, it's kind of a pity about that, but, um, I'm still having fun. I'm, I'm enjoying this ride. Um, I'm gonna give this episode an 8.5 out of 10. It doesn't really hold a candle to episode 5, though. I'm sorry, it doesn't, but, um, I really liked it. Thanks for watching, um, and if you're new here and you like the channel, please like what you see and subscribe. Stick around. We're gonna be reacting to a lot of Invincible, a lot of X-Men, um, a lot of other stuff that I'm really, really excited about, so. Thank you guys. That's my alarm. Anyway. Peace, you guys.